much. Um, I'm Priyanka, one of the Assistant Directors of Admission, and I'll be co-presenting today with one of our Senior Admission Ambassadors, Kyla Fisher, and uh, we'll be sharing some information with you today to talk, obviously, about scripts, but um, also talking a little bit about the Claremont Colleges, our consortium that we're part of, um, aspects of academic, social life, so it's going to be a pretty comprehensive overview. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen for the majority of the presentation today, so you're welcome to keep your cameras on if you'd like. You can turn your cameras off if you're more comfortable with that, whatever suits you. Um, and you, there's also access to a chat function in our Zoom meeting, so if any questions pop up, um, feel free to use that chat function to start putting your questions in there. We likely won't get to them until closer towards the end of the presentation, but again, if anything kind of um, pops up throughout the presentation, you're welcome to start typing in questions and we'll get to them um, once we transition into more of a, a Q&A session. But Kyle and I will be uh, co-presenting and just kind of navigating through several different slides here. So um, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen and then we'll kick it off with introductions. Hmm. All right, can everybody see my presentation okay? All right, awesome, perfect. Um, so again, thank you all so much. I know we just had a, a few more people join us, so thanks for joining us for the information session. Um, again, Kyla and I will be co-presenting. I'm one of the Senior uh, Assistant Directors of Admission, and uh, I'll also be co-presenting with Kyla, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'll kick it off to Kyla for uh, Kyla's introductions. Um, hello everyone, my name is Kyla Joy Fisher. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am a current senior at Scripps from Monrovia, California, which is like 30, 40 minutes away from Claremont, a bit closer to downtown Los Angeles and Pasadena. Um, I am a dual major in psychology and theater. Um, some things that I do on campus, I am very involved in the theater department. I usually do one to three productions a semester in some facet. Um, so when I was physically on campus, that took up a majority of my time. Um, but I'm also a part of Italian club. I've been studying the Italian language uh, since my sophomore year at Scripps, um, and I recently studied abroad in Florence, Italy. Um, I'll be talking about all of these things in little nuggets throughout the entire info session, but those are just some things about me. Awesome. Thanks, Kyla. So I'll go ahead and start us off by just situating us geographically to where Scripps is located. So um, Scripps is part of the Claremont Colleges, which is a consortium that we'll talk about in the next slide here. Uh, but you'll notice the Claremont Colleges are located right here, uh, where this black box is indicated on the map. Um, we're about 35 miles east of downtown Los Angeles, and Claremont itself is at the very eastern edge of LA County. Um, Claremont itself is uh, more of a suburban residential area. Um, much of the community is um, a lot of people that reside in and around the Claremont area tend to be connected to the Claremont Colleges in some way, shape, or form. In many ways, it's kind of like your picturesque college town. Um, Claremont has a lovely downtown village area that has a lot of small businesses and shops and eateries and restaurants. Um, there's also like a farmer's market. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can engage with within Claremont. Um, but the big draw, of course, is the proximity to LA. So within Claremont as well, within the downtown village area, there's also access to a Metrolink station. So students that want to go and explore LA and everything that it has to offer um, can actually take the Metrolink and it drives uh, straight into um, downtown LA. It's roughly about a 40 to a 50 minute train ride. Um, but of course, there's so much else surrounding us within Southern California. Um, we're also right along the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountain. So if you're into the outdoors, there are certainly quite a lot of outdoorsy things to do within our area. And the mountains are just north of campus. Um, if you head further east, um, you're heading towards Palm Springs, Coachella Valley. There's tons to do um, in that direction as well. Um, Josh Tree is a popular destination that's roughly about an hour and a half or so away from campus. Another great outdoorsy spot to check out. Um, we're about an hour or so away from the coastline as well. Um, so if you're interested in exploring uh, 
Southern California beaches, you certainly have access to that as well. Um, and then if you head further south, about an hour and a half to two hours south of Claremont, you're heading towards San Diego, which is another kind of um, popular kind of city area within Southern California that also has a lot to do. But just wanted to contextualize and give some background information to the location, where we are in um, in, in correspondence to some of the other areas within Southern California. But basically, there's tons to do. Um, you get to enjoy 300 days of sunshine in Southern California as well. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate to be in the location that we're in and um, also to have proximity to um, a major city like LA as well. And then speaking of the Claremont Colleges, um, this is the consortium that Scripps is a member of, but we aren't the only college uh, within the Claremont Colleges. We're actually made up of five undergraduate liberal arts colleges, um, and then there's also two undergraduate, I'm sorry, two graduate schools that are also part of our consortium. So five undergraduate colleges and then two graduate institutions, which we refer to as the Claremont Colleges. Um, the undergraduate schools you'll see are, are all indicated here. They're all within approximately one square mile. Um, so they're very close in proximity, which leads to just a lot of movement that's happening across the consortium uh, when we tend to operate in person. And so um, there's also shared opportunities, resources, facilities, and spaces across the consortium. But I'd say one of the biggest advantages to the Claremont Colleges um, is the fact that you get to um, kind of establish one of these schools as your as your home campus, um, the one that really speaks to your core values, and each of them are a little bit different from one another as well. Um, but then you also have access to this larger consortium, uh, a larger uh, kind of college community that you're connected to. So each campus tends to have either a little bit below, uh, above or below a thousand students in terms of their population, but altogether there's roughly about 6,000 undergraduate students that attend the Claremont Colleges. So it, it in many ways is kind of like the best of both worlds, a smaller school and a larger school feel all in one. Um, and then there's access to things like um, you know, classes that you can cross register into across the consortium, extracurricular opportunities with over 250 shared 5C clubs and organizations, dining halls and eateries, um, you know, access to other facilities across our campuses. So there's lots of opportunities that exist across the Claremont Colleges, but definitely one of the biggest advantages is being able to have access to both a smaller and a larger community all in one. Um, so that's a little bit about the Claremont Colleges. We'll probably be referring to the five C's pretty frequently throughout our presentation, but just to kind of give you a little initial context to um, what the five C's are all about. And then specifically with Scripps, um, these next two slides that I'll talk about are just kind of introducing our community and also introducing academics. So um, Scripps was actually the second of the undergraduate colleges to be founded in 1926 in the height of the suffrage movement. Um, and we were founded as a women's college. We remain a women's college, but we've certainly evolved quite a lot since 1926. Um, we're certainly not the same women's college that we were when we were initially founded. Um, Scripps has changed quite a lot over the years and decades but um, we remain a really small, tight-knit community with just a little over a thousand students that attend Scripps. Um, but there's definitely no shortage of academic opportunities with over 50 different majors that you can choose from. And you can see even from some of our popular majors that are listed here that students study across a wide variety of different academic disciplines. Um, but then, of course, one of the benefits of being at a small school is being in smaller, more intentional classes where you're really engaging with your peers and professors professors in these smaller, more tight-knit settings. So um, having smaller classes, smaller student-to-faculty ratios is definitely a big advantage of attending a small liberal arts college like Scripps. And then specifically around academics, there's also some kind of key distinctive aspects to the academics at Scripps specifically. Um, and of course, there's lots of shared academic opportunities as well. But um, things like, for example, the core curriculum um, are kind of distinctive experiences that you get to look forward to as a Scripps student specifically. So speaking of core, I'll kind of uh, give a little overview to this. And then Kyla will talk a little bit more about core um, through her own experiences. But basically, the core curriculum is a three course, three semester sequence that all Scripps students take and only Scripps students take. 
week. And um, the purpose of the core curriculum is to give students um, a comprehensive understanding of what interdisciplinary learning really looks like. And so it's broken up into three specific courses. Core one, which you take your first semester of your first year, core two and your uh, second term of your first year, and then core three is taken uh, the first term of your sophomore year. You will be taking other courses during those semesters um, in addition to those core classes, but the whole purpose of the core curriculum is, is to give you that, that introduction, that foundational understanding that you'll build upon for the remainder of your time at Scripps. So um, oftentimes in your core classes, you're working with your peers and professors to break down concepts of one subject over another, and you're, you're getting that opportunity to kind of examine different academic disciplines through a multi-layered lens, um, thus making you a really strong uh, critical thinker in that process. Um, in addition to that, you're also engaging in discussion-based classes. You're getting a chance to um, work on special projects. And so CORE kind of provides, again, this, this comprehensive introduction to navigating academics at Scripps and um, also gives you a chance to dabble in a little bit of everything academically. So if you're not 100% sure what you want to study just yet, CORE can be a great place to kind of start and, and unpack some of those areas that you might be interested in. And then majors is another kind of prominent aspect of navigating your academic experience, but you don't have to come to Scripps officially declared into a particular major. In fact, Scripps students won't officially declare their major or majors really until the spring semester of their sophomore years. So you have time um, to take different classes, to meet with your advisors, to really figure out what you might be interested in. Some of our students are even multi-interested or multi-decided, so about 20% will choose to double or dual major, um, which is another thing that you can explore. Um, and then at the very end of your um, academic journey at Scripps, you'll be working on a senior thesis project. And senior thesis is required of all Scripps students, um, but it gives you a chance as an undergraduate student to really dive deep into an area of interest within your major um, and to conduct significant undergraduate research within a particular topic of interest that you would like to explore further. And um, you know, students come up with some really interesting projects as part of their senior thesis. And again, it's giving you that opportunity to take ownership over what it is that you'd like to unpack a little bit further. And we actually have a tradition on campus called Capstone Day, where students, uh, script seniors, actually get to show showcase their thesis projects to the rest of the community. And it's a day to kind of celebrate academic achievements of our Scripps seniors and to um, really showcase all of the different topics and ideas that they've explored through their thesis projects. And um, so that's something that we, we really look forward to celebrating and um, you know, just sharing broadly with the community. So those are some of the more script specific experiences. In addition to that, you're also going to have other academic opportunities that are available to you broadly across the Claremont colleges. And so cross registration um, is another kind of important aspect of experiencing academics. Many students participate in cross registration where you'll go and explore other course offerings across the Claremont colleges. Maybe even in some cases you're exploring a major at one of the other Claremont colleges as a script student. That's also something that's available um, and kind of We'll talk a little bit more about cross-registration too. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of being at a small liberal arts college is um, benefiting from smaller, more intentional classes that do tend to be more seminar style and discussion-based settings. So that's a little bit about academics at Scripps. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Kyla to um, talk a little bit more about the core experience and cross-registration as well. Um, yeah, so this slide is a bit of information about what my core experience was like. Um, in each one, I learned something that was fundamentally important for the rest of my college career. So you really do take away a lot from the core experience, um, but there's so many options and avenues that you can do that um, you really get a lot of time to explore and customize your own experience. Um, I don't think anyone had all three classes that I was in. So um, there's a lot of ways to kind of mix and match all of your interests. Um, but for core one, um, we have a different topic that kind of orchestrates the entire semester. Um, and each professor comes in talking about how this core concept relates to each of their own departments and what they study and what they teach. Um, and it kind of gives you a crash course in every department at Scripps. Um, so when I took it all the way in 2017, um, 
Um, our topic was community. Um, so each professor came in and talked about how community applies to each of their own disciplines. Um, this year it's truth and it'll be truth for one more year and then it'll change again. Um, it rotates every three years. Um, so that way people can kind of stay in the same topic, but professors have the ability to innovate the curriculum um, to keep it more up to date with what's going on in the world. Um, and something that I really took away from that class was and it's a great way to really just meet people and professors. So if you come into Scripps having absolutely no idea what you want to do or what you want to study, it's a great way to find somebody who's already involved in that department that you can talk to. Um, so you can have played um, like a clarinet for like 10 years and you're like, I don't know if I want to be involved in music still, but I know that Professor Kang led a core uh, discussion and lecture on how music creates a sense of community. So I can go to her office hours and I can talk to her about that and then ask some follow-up questions about the music department. Um, so it gives you a lot of ways to connect to your professors. Um, and I think core one is the most discussed topic for all uh, first year students, because if you find a lull in the conversation, if you see someone that you wanna talk to and you don't know how to start a conversation, talk about core. Um, we're all taking the exact same class. Um, so it's a way that you can connect to anybody from um, your entire grade and have something in common with them. So it's a great icebreaker. Um, and then for core two and three, I really wanted to focus on art history and literature. Um, those are two other subjects that I'm really interested about, um, but I can't have four majors, so I boiled it down to two, um, and then I used core two and three um, to really focus on two things that I was really interested in and didn't really have any other scheduled time to do it. Um, so in core two, I took Zen Buddhism with Professor Bruce Coates, um, who is very prolific um, in the Zen Buddhist um, and architecture um, history. He wrote the um, script for a Smithsonian documentary um, about one of the temples that we talked about. So um, I was very impressed by the knowledge that he had and his ability to give it to me. Um, and it was really great just looking at mostly cultures in China, Japan, and Korea um, and seeing how Zen Buddhism um, kind of incorporated into their cultures, how it was rejected in some ways, and how it transferred between uh, three very distinct um, different countries. Um, and it was definitely something that I wouldn't have learned in any other traditional um, history class, either in my high school career or in a lot of the other courses that are taught. Um, so it felt like such a unique experience that I really wanted to jump into when I had the chance. Um, and something very unique that happened in that class, um, there's actually a Zen Buddhist monastery that's um, semi near campus. Um, so our uh, professor Bruce Coates brought in um, a monk from that monastery and he led um, a 45 minute meditation. And it is the most rested I ever felt um, as a first year in college. College, so I definitely appreciated that experience. Um, and so I think my biggest takeaway from that was um, really conversing with my classmates. It was a lot of like really confusing and difficult things to learn. Um, we mostly just looked at poetry um, and really learning how to dissect things that when you first read it makes no sense to you. Um, so there's a lot of critical thinking and um, community skills that I learned in that class. Um, then in core three, I took realism and anti-realism and art and literature with Professor Aaron Matz. And that was looking at art, literature, um, history, um, and just like interpersonal relationships between individual artists and creators and writers and seeing how uh, the context in the country that they were in, um, the time they were in, and the people that they interacted with and how that influenced all of their work. Um, so it's really cool just kind of focusing on like a friendship that these two writers had and it informed this book that we're reading um, and really just seeing how time impacts individual people. Um, and as a psychology major, I'm very interested in how people um, process um, different stimulus and environment. So it was a very cool way to kind of incorporate something that was very similar, uh, like familiar to me and then bring it into a new context. Um, so I really enjoyed that class. Um, and the biggest takeaway from that was I learned how to go to office hours, which was the most terrifying thing to me for some reason, because I thought my professor would think that I was stupid or that I wasn't paying attention and I needed extra help or I was bothering them and taking time out of their busy schedules. So I was always terrified to go to office hours. Um, and Professor Aaron Matz 
it's required that we reduce office hours. Um, and so I remember leaving the first time that I met with him feeling really stupid, not for anything that he said to me, but because it was the easiest thing I had done in college that I have done in college, and it was the thing I was most afraid of. Um, and so after that experience, I'll, I would go to a professor's office hours if I had a question, if I just wanted some positive reinforcement when I knew I was on track for a long-term project. Um, I would go to one of my favorite psych professors and I'd just show her psychology fact TikToks and like get her confused. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can engage with professors outside of classroom time and office hours is such a great way to do it. Um, so I really needed that like push into doing something that I really appreciate right now. Um, so that was kind of what my core experience was like, um, and they were all very important to me for becoming um, a sophomore and a junior and a senior in college, knowing that I had gotten all those skills um, from my previous core classes. Um, and then kind of shifting gears and how academics work in the consortium, um, through cross-registration, we can kind of just take classes wherever we'd like to, whenever they're taught, whatever school they're taught at. Um, and at Scripps specifically, there's no rule or requirement as to how many classes you can take off campus. Uh, that will be determined by your majors um, and the departments that um, you're majoring or minoring in. Um, so until you're a second semester sophomore, no one's going to tell you no if you want to take a class at this school or at that school or at this time. Um, you really have a lot of freedom, especially with your general education requirements. There's absolutely no limitations where those could be located. Um, and so we're all kind of just like jumping into different school environments. Um, one of um, our other admission ambassadors, Angie, she doesn't even look at what school um, each of the classes she's interested in um, is located at. She'll just sign up for classes and then like the day before class starts or the week before, she'll check and be like, oh, I guess I'm going to Pitzer this semester. Um, and using that way to kind of just take the classes that you want and need and then finding out where they're located um, afterwards. Um, all the schools will cross register typically at Scripps. Um, maybe like one course a semester will be taken off campus. Um, but if you major off campus um, or if you really become attached to professors at a different school, um, that number can fluctuate depending on the semester or what your academic interests are. Um, but really you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, our professors usually have no idea who goes to what school. Um, so it's very rare that you be in a situation where if you go to a Harvey Mudd class, your professor's only talking to other Harvey Mudd students and they completely ignore you. That's not really going to be the case. Um, and people typically cross register so much. It won't be you sitting in a Pomona class and everyone else goes to Pomona and you're like the one scripts person sitting there like, oh boy. Um, that's also not typical um, of an experience to have. Um, usually it's a pretty strong mix. You might see two to four to sometimes even five schools in a singular classroom. Um, and our professors treat us all the same. They usually don't even know what school you go to until they have to email you. And they have to send it to at blankschool.edu. And then they're like, oh, I had no idea you went to Pitzer. I thought you went to this school. Um, so they're really just welcoming to teach whoever comes into their classrooms. Um, so I really enjoy cross-registration. Um, the theater department is based at Pomona, so I spend a lot of time on Pomona's campus. Um, and I've never felt um, like left out of the loop or excluded in any way because I didn't go to that school. Um, and to kind of show you guys what it looks like uh, to sign up for classes, because it's a very foreign concept to technically go to five schools at once, um, but it really is as seamless and um, as seamless as uh, we can describe it to you. Um, but if you look at the screenshot that I provided, this is actually from our class registration portal. Um, these are four classes that were offered in this past semester in the fall of 2020. Um, so these classes just ended just over a week ago. Um, but these are all for the scripts social science GE. Um, so each school has its own set of GEs. Um, none of the other schools will replicate it in the same way that Scripps does. Um, but if you look at the course code for these first four, um, which is on the second column to the left, it shows you four letters for the department that it's located in and then two letters for the school that it's located at. Um, so for the first four classes for this very Scripps specific GE, um, they are at PZ for Pitzer, PO for Pomona, Pomona, and then Pitzer. So the first four options for a Scripps GE aren't even located at Scripps. Um, so it really is that easy. You just press like the add button um, on the most left column um, and then it say, do you want to add this course? You say yes and then you're in it. Um, so it's as easy to sign up for a Pitzer class as it is to sign up for a Scripps class. Um, yeah, that's um, some information about cross registering. Awesome. Thanks, Kyla. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, you know, 
we've talked a lot about academics, but definitely I'd say the social community and your the ways that you're engaging in campus life is also going to be a large component of your, your collegiate experience. And there's a lot of different ways that you can engage and, and spend your time outside of your classes. Um, there's certainly a wide variety of clubs and organizations that you can join, whether it's across the five C's, there's, and there's over 250 that are available to students across the five C's, and then Scripps also has just a little over 30 active organizations. So many different ways that you can engage, be involved, um, and different opportunities that are available to you in terms of extracurricular. So the nice thing is, is that there's, um, you know, certain opportunities that you're interested in that you want to continue with or hobbies that you have that you want to continue with, um, more than likely you'll be able to find it at Scripps or across the five C's. Um, or if there's new opportunities, maybe new hidden passions that you want to discover, there's a also a lot of ways that you get to branch out and, and try something new. Um, in addition to some of the formal co-curriculars, there's also tons of events and programs that are hosted all across the Claremont Colleges. Um, Scripps has uh, its own guest speaker series called Scripps Presents, which is one of my um, favorite set of programming across the Claremont Colleges. Um, and there's tons of other guest speaker series that are available across the five C's. So you can go and attend um, you know, those different events and have those different opportunities to hear from different perspectives and different people outside of Claremont. Um, there's also community building events that are happening both in and outside of your residence halls and all of the Claremont colleges, obviously this year is a bit of an exception to that, tend to be pretty um, residential communities where students are living and learning amongst one another. So I always tell students you're really only going to be bored unless you want to be, but more than likely you'll probably find something that piques your interest from week to week. And whether it's a you know movie screening that's happening out on the lawn space at Scripps, or if you're going to go to a lecture talk at CMC or a documentary screening at Pomona or a meditation class at Pitzer or um, maybe you're going to go you know watch watch or hear somebody else give a give a neat lecture at, at Harvey Mudd there's always things to do there's always different events and programs that are organized on a week-to-week -week basis um, and then in addition to that too there's also certain programming that's specific to just scripts as well so traditions are definitely really popular and important aspects of engaging with the community at Scripps. And like many women's colleges, we really value our traditions because um, these are, again, specific aspects to your student experience that ties you to the rest of the community, allows you to kind of reconnect and engage with the people that are um, rooted within the community that you're a part of as well. So the traditions that are listed here are three of our most popular traditions. Um, so I can give you a quick little overview of that before we talk about study abroad and leadership. But um, the matriculation ceremony is actually a, um, a, a, a celebration that includes the Denison Library doors. So Scripps has a library on campus called Denison, and it has these beautiful wooden doors at the very front of the entrance, but they only open twice a year, once for the matriculation ceremony, which is basically a huge celebration welcoming all new Scripps students to um, the community. And there's usually like dancing and music and um, live music. Uh, so it really is truly a celebration. And there's a formal ceremony that students will participate in as well in the very beginning of their time at Scripps. And then the second time the Denison Doors open is actually for commencement. So it all comes full circle. Um, students will proceed out of the Denison Doors and head out to the commencement ceremony, which is kind of symbolizing, you know, the end of your journey at Scripps. So the experience that you have with the Denison Doors um, starts in the very beginning of your time at Scripps and then ends at the, at the um, tail end of your experience at Scripps as well. Then we have the graffiti wall, which is located between two of our oldest residence halls. And every graduating class since 1931 has designed a piece of artwork or mural that's then painted onto the wall. And graduating seniors get a chance to sign their name alongside their class year's mural. And so it's a great representation of Scripps history. When you look at it, you see all of the different interests and things that impacted different graduating class years. And so it's literally history that's rendered onto these walls and uh, a really powerful representation of what collective success looks like at a women's college as well. Um, so the graffiti wall tradition is also a really popular one. And then Wednesday afternoon tea happens to be one of my favorite traditions at Scripps. Um, so every Wednesday during the academic year, we have afternoon tea. Um, so from 3.30 to 4.30, the community comes together. Anybody's welcome to participate. And um, it's 
just a neat way to take an hour out of your week on a Wednesday afternoon to just come together, reconnect with people that are part of your community and um, just have that opportunity to enjoy some good conversations and some good company. So um, Wednesday afternoon tea is usually celebrated in Seal Court, which is one of our outdoor gathering spaces on campus. And um, it's just a really lovely space to be able to have that tradition um, take place in. Um, and then I also wanted to talk a little bit about study abroad as well as our leadership center. Um, so study abroad is another really popular experience. Um, typically about 60% of students will choose to study abroad, um, typically in their junior year, either fall or spring semester, but in some cases students study abroad for the full academic year as well. Um, and there's over 100 programs in over 40 different countries and Scripps tends to partner with other institutions, either domestic or institutions abroad to um, host these programs for study abroad experiences and there's again a range of styles of programs that you can choose from as well. Um, so Kylie will talk a little bit about her study abroad experience a bit later on here. Um, and then last I wanted to talk about LASPA which is our leadership center. Many women's colleges have dedicated leadership centers or leadership resources because leadership does tend to be a really prominent part of our community and so LASPA um, really works and organizes a lot of different programs programming and partnership and engagement opportunities for um, students to develop these leadership skills and to emerge as leaders. And leadership is definitely not a one size fits all model at a women's college. There are um, leaders represented in a variety of roles and capacities at a place like Scripps. But LASPA plays a, such an important role in terms of just shaping some of that programming. And they also collaborate with other offices and departments across campus as well. So some of that programming and event opportunities that you'll see at Scripps will in, in some cases even be tied to LASPA as well. So that's just a bit about campus life and I'll turn it over to Kyla to um, talk a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, so I just included a slide on things that I've done with my friends, either in the Claremont Village, which is about a 10 minute walk away um, from Scripps. Um, some things are in the larger LA area and some things are just in California in general. Um, typically, like Priyanka said, it's really hard to be bored at the five C's. Um, so usually when someone does want to venture off campus, um, it's typically because they realize like, hmm, I haven't left the five C's in two straight months. I should go do something. Um, so that's typically when people want to branch out and there's a lot of ways to get off campus um, regardless of what your transportation um, preferences or situation is. Um, students from all four years can bring cars. It's relatively cheap. I think it's $50 a semester to like have a sticker on your car so you can park it anywhere. Um, but if you don't um, bring a car, that's absolutely no problem. If you know someone with a car, you're absolutely set. Um, we're about a 15 minute walk away from the train station. Um, that can take you um, into downtown LA, into anywhere really in Southern California um, relatively um, easily. It's, I think it's about $7 for the whole day, so it's pretty affordable. Um, and it's also located at the base of the um, Claremont Village, so it's very easy and quick to walk to. Um, students can also rent cars from Scripps, uh, which are called Scripps vans, but they're not just vans. Um, but they're five to nine seater cars so you can rent to either take for the afternoon if you want to go to Target really quick for the day, if you want to go out into LA um, for any reason, or if you want to take it out for the whole week and go to Joshua Tree for uh, to go camping for like spring break. Um, they're all there for you to use and you just have to pay for the gas. Um, so it's very affordable. I think out of all the options for car wise, um, it's pretty great. Um, my friends and I have used it uh, quite a few times. Um, actually, one of the photos in the middle um, row on the far right is my friends and I sitting outside waiting for my friend Emily to bring around one of the Scripps fans. Um, we had the opportunity to be extras on the show Insecure, um, and so there were seven of us going, so we needed a huge van to kind of get us there. Um, and none of us had, had cars at that point, so it was a really great way to kind of just hop into a pretty large car and then drive out to the film location um, and they, we were there until like two in the morning and then we returned the car and then we were back at Scripps so um, it was a very fun and cool very LA thing to do um, and it's been really great just kind of popping around to different things um, I think Claremont is so perfectly located where 
you're close enough to everything that if you want to go do something, it's very feasible for you to do it, but you're not impacted by the negative parts about living in LA. Um, definitely being closer to um, downtown Los Angeles when I'm at home. Um, like if Taylor Swift was coming for a concert at the Rose Bowl, you could not get on the freeway because everyone is there uh, trying to get to the concert. So that would change the way that you went to this place or to that place or to visit a friend this place. Um, so I definitely liked being a bit farther away from that that I can still go to Taylor Swift's concert, but if I don't go, I don't have to schedule myself around it. Um, so I do really think that Claremont is a really great location, and there's so many things that you can do regardless of if you want to be out in nature, if you want to go to concerts, if you want to be at the beach, um, if you just want to do smaller things, like go to coffee shops everywhere. Um, there's a lot of things to kind of suit everybody's needs and wants um, throughout the entire year. Um, and then if you want to leave Claremont even further, uh, you can study abroad. Um, so my timing could have been better. Um, I did go abroad in the spring of 2020. Um, so I did get two months um, in Florence before I was sent home. Um, but I really did enjoy my time abroad. Um, I luckily found a program that had absolutely everything that I wanted in it. Um, because Scripps partners with so many different programs and schools, um, it's very rare that you won't find some Thing that's interesting to you um, and if you do find something that isn't approved you can still get it approved and you can go and then people can go in the future as well so our list of approved programs grows every single year um, so really our study abroad office just doesn't want to say no so as long as you can help figure out logistics you can go abroad um, and so I was able to find a program that got me into a homestay so I was able to stay with a roommate who actually only lives like 30 miles away from me um, so it's really cool having someone who already had a few like geographical things in common with me um, and then we stayed with um, an 83 year old Italian woman who is the best cook I've ever had the pleasure to eat with um, she did not speak any English so my roommate and I learned a lot of Italian in her home um, by that point I was already taking Italian three and she was an Italian four so we already could keep up with her but together we had like one fluent brain um, so uh, we enjoyed conversing with her at the dinner table every night um, and then I was able to take so many classes that um, in total are very hard to find a program that has absolutely everything. They typically like to focus on a collection of departments or a singular department and be really strong in that. Um, but my interests in psychology and theater are not as overlapping to the rest of the world as they are to me. Um, so it's a little difficult finding a program um, that had both of the classes that I needed, but I was able to take a psychology course, a theater course, I continued taking Italian, and then I was also able to take um, a Renaissance art history class. Um, when I took AP art history in high school, I like fell in love with the Renaissance and I was like, I need to go to Italy, but I don't want to pay for it. I should figure out how to do that. And then I got to scripts and they're like, we'll cover that. Just continue paying tuition and you can go. Um, so I took that class when I was abroad and it gave me free tickets to every single museum in Florence. So by the time that I left, I had gone to everything but the Pinocchio Museum um, by the time that I went home. So I really felt like I did everything that I sought out to do in Florence. And then in like two years when it's safe for me to go back, I can go do the other things that I wanted to do in Italy. Um, but I really felt like I kind of milked everything that I wanted out of my study abroad experience. And I left with really close friends. I'm still really close to my roommate. We talked to our host mom like once a month. Um, so I still feel very tied to my entire experience, even though it wasn't as long as I had uh, planned and hoped for it to be. But I really appreciated the overall experience and everything that I was able to take away from it. Awesome. And uh, we're getting close to getting close to the end here of our presentation, but I um, wanted to talk a little bit further about the one obvious distinction that makes Scripps very different from our um, neighboring Claremont colleges. So like I mentioned much earlier in the beginning of our presentation, um, Scripps is the only one of the Claremont colleges that's a women's college. And um, that is definitely something that I'd say influences our identity, our community, academics, um, pretty much every facet of the Scripps community, I think in many ways is influenced by um, our identity as a women's college. So first I wanted to unpack a little bit further what that looks like in terms of engagement in your classrooms and academics. And, um, you know, I think for a lot of students, one of the things that they really uh, 
come into their own for is amplifying their voices and kind of gaining that confidence of speaking up, sharing your ideas, um, not feeling intimidated or inhibited from doing so as well. And um, being in intentionally smaller classes too, you really do get that opportunity to engage with one another, to be in a space where um, your voice can be amplified, but you can also amplify the voices of the people around you as well. And so for a lot of students, that initial kind of building confidence in your voice and gaining your voice really just start with the ways that you're engaging in your classroom. And, there, and then, of course, much of that will also echo outside of the classroom as well and the ways that you engage with the rest of the community. And speaking of community, um, Scripps is definitely a challenging place. It's an academically rigorous environment where you're going to be pushing your way of thinking. You're going to be stepping outside of your comfort zone definitely more than once, but um, Scripps tends to be much more of a collaborative community than it does a hyper-competitive community. And that's not to say that there aren't any aspects of competition within Scripps, but it's, it's certainly a place where um, your peers are going to challenge you, but for the sake of allowing you to become the best versions of yourself, not for the sake of wanting to be better than everybody else around you. Um, this idea of competition, I'd say, is something that pushes students to continue to come into their own and pursue their passions, but not necessarily feel like you need to measure your success to everybody else. Um, because everybody's path is a little bit different in college. Everyone's pursuing different majors. You may have different intended outcomes of your experience. And because of that, it's a community where you really get to celebrate collective success. One person's path to success does not mean it has to impede your path to success. And so this idea of being a challenging yet collaborative community is really what Scripps is all about. And um, again, further gives students an opportunity to celebrate collective success, continue to, to come into their own in a community where you can pursue your passions without feeling like you're competing with all of the other people around you. Um, so it really is a place that um, lifts each other up rather than, than pulling each other down. Um, so that's a little bit about our community. And then leadership, we actually touched upon a little bit already when um, I shared some information about our uh, leadership center, LASPA. Um, but leadership is definitely another, I'd say, aspect to your community, the ways that you're engaging that is also really distinctive especially at a women's college. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there isn't a one-size-fits-all model to leadership, and every student comes into leadership a little bit differently. You may have different aspects of leadership that you decide that you want to make an impact in, whether it's joining student government or stepping into other leadership positions, whether it's becoming a service leader and giving back to your community, or maybe you're somebody who expresses leadership through creativity. There are so many different ways that you could define what your version of leadership looks like. And um, I think the most powerful outcome of that is you get to see your peers represented in a variety of leadership capacities. And it's giving you a chance to also see representation in action, a chance to see your peers um, leading and guiding conversations, um, you know, making a significant impact in the ways that are most meaningful to them. So leadership does not have to have one singular definition, but in fact, you get to see it represented in a way that is, um, I, I'd say, meaningful to each individual within our community. And then, of course, life after Scripps is also, I'd say, another important aspect of your experience because, of course, all of these things, all of these values, all of these skill sets that you're gaining over your four years, um, you know, it's great to be able to have those experiences, but the larger takeaways of that is that you get to take those values, those skill sets, and bring it outwards, bring it beyond Scripps walls. And, you know, for the fact that we're in a consortium where you get to test that out initially as an undergraduate student, that's great. But then as you're graduating from Scripps and entering different professions or returning to old communities or deciding to join new communities, you have these aspects of confidence, of valuing community, of stepping into leadership, and you get to bring that outwards into, into these other spaces that you decide to occupy. Um, and you're also part of a really powerful network that you'll be connected to. And with Scripps, we have alums and graduates that are leaders in a variety of different professional capacities, are pursuing graduate programs, are going and making an impact in a lot of different ways beyond their time at Scripps. And so that's also a network that you continue to stay connected to. And then you also have the larger 5C network as well that you're also connected to as well. So your life after Scripps, I'd say in many ways, is also shaped and formed by the experiences that you have over your 
your undergraduate years as well. So that's a little bit about the Women's College advantages. Again, this is just touching upon um, just the beginning aspects of what it's like to be engaged and being part of the Scripps community. But of course, I um, wanted to share this with you all since it's, it's something that certainly I'd say is top of mind for a lot of students as they're navigating their college search and considering women's colleges. All right, back to you, Kyla. Uh, yeah, so this is just a short slide on the Pomona Theater Department. Um, if you're not interested in theater, but you do have a passion or, the in, or an interest in any of the arts, so music, singing, um, any of the physical arts like ceramics, painting, drawing, uh, photography, uh, anything like that, uh, dance as well. Um, most of what I'm saying also applies to other departments, but my personal experience comes from theater. Um, but how all of our arts work is that they're typically based at one, maybe two um, schools, but it's a hub for anyone in the consortium to kind of go there. Um, so theater is only based at Pomona, um, and most of the other um, arts programs are mostly based at Scripps. Um, but anyone from all five campuses can come in, um, regardless of what your commitment or skill levels are. Um, you have the ability to work with people who it's their major, it's their minor, it's their main academic interest, it's something they haven't tried ever, it's something they did in sixth grade, never touched again, and they decided, it's my last shot, I'll go for it. Um, so there's a mixture of people who are all kind of trying things out or doing something because it's the thing that keeps them up um, and gets them up in the morning. Um, so you really get to meet a lot of people from all different academic interests, different schools and different um, backgrounds um, and you just get to work with them in some kind of art um, and each group has their own performances um, or art shows so you can see everything that everyone's working on um, but most of them do work towards like a long longer term um, event um, so you get to have like smaller interactions and more consistent interactions with the people in your group um, you can also take classes in any of the departments major in them minor in them as well um, so if you want to try something out take a class or join an orchestra. Um, it's really up to you to kind of jump into it whenever you feel like it. Um, if you just want it to be something that happens at the end of the day, it could be the biggest thing you do when you're done with classes or the smallest thing you do when you feel like it or when a friend drags you over to it. Um, so there's a lot of ways to kind of get involved, um, but I've absolutely loved being a part of the theater department. Um, I've been able to work um, so well and so closely with my professors and staff members in the department. I've done entirely student-run productions. Um, so I've really kind of just like jumped around whenever something sounded interesting or whenever I felt like it. Um, and I've met so many different people in all the different ways that I've been involved in the theater department. And I can't imagine my college career um, without theater being there every single step of the way. Um, some of my closest friends were made um, in that building um, with the different productions that we were in. Um, I also go to a lot of acapella performances. One of my closest friends is in one of our seven acapella groups. Um, so I go to all of Moods Swings performances. I have all their songs downloaded onto my phone. Um, I'm their biggest fan. I have a sticker of them on my laptop, so I'm very invested. Um, and that's kind of what like everyone is um, kind of doing. So it might not be the thing that you do, but you love going to it. Uh, I love going to dance performances. There's so many talented groups, and they'll do like joint performances. They'll do battles sometimes, or like just like freestyles. Um, so even if you're not interested in doing it physically yourself, you can go watch it um, and get to see how many talented people are in the consortium and how they all use their talents in a multitude of ways. Um, so I really love how um, art and performance um, are woven into um, the social aspects of the consortium and all the different ways you can get engaged with it. Awesome. Well, we are here close to the very, very end of our presentation. I have just one final slide to present on, and um, then we'll get straight to your questions. So again, if you have any questions that came up throughout this presentation, feel free to use that chat box um, in order to type them in, and, and Kyla and I will go ahead and um, get to that Q&A very, very shortly. But before we jump into that, and just to give you all a few minutes to um, you know, type in your questions and, and submit those through the chat function. I wanted to um, just wrap up our conversation today by sharing some um, information around admission and financial aid. So um, one of the things that you'll see here is um, some of our application deadlines for both um, transfer 
applicants as well as for first year applicants. Um, some of our deadlines have already passed. So for um, spring transfer application as well as our early decision one uh, first year applications, those deadlines have passed. But we do have some additional deadlines that are listed here. So uh, for first year applicants, um, we do offer early decision two. And the really um, the only difference between early decision two and early decision one is the deadline. So if you're still interested in early decision, if you're, um, you know, let's say Scripps is your top choice, you can't picture yourself applying anyplace else. Um, this is the community that you see yourself in. Early decision can be a great option, but it is a binding admission plan. So if you're admitted through early decision, then you're committed to coming to Scripps 100%. Regular decision is our non-binding admission plan, so um, that does not have a, a commitment tied to it. Um, the majority of our applicants apply through regular decision, so that's an option that's available as well. Our deadline is January 5th, so getting close, almost around the corner. And then we do also have a fall transfer application deadline, and that's March 15th for our office. Um, we do also, um, this year is our first year as um, SAT and AC, ACT test optional. Um, students can also self-report their scores if they would like their scores considered with their application, but again, it is 100% optional in our application process. We will also be permanently test optional moving forward as well. So this is not a temporary policy for Scripps, but in fact, um, a permanent policy that we'll be moving forward with in the foreseeable future. Um, you are at no disadvantage if you decide not to include scores with your application, um, and you do not need to justify why you're not providing scores with your application. So it is 100% optional in our process. Um, we do also offer um, financial aid. So need-based aid is available for students, and we meet a student's 100% demonstrated financial need in our financial aid process. So basically what that means is whatever gap exists between our total cost of attendance and your estimated family contribution, which is determined by our financial aid office, um, we would meet that need 100%. If you wanted to get an idea, a rough estimate, per se, of what your aid package could potentially look like at Scripps, um, the net price calculator, as well as the My Intuition cost estimator, are great financial aid resources and tools to get an idea of potentially what that package could look like. Again, that's not a financial aid application to Scripps, but it's more of a resource that's available for students to um, get a better understanding of whether Scripps is financially the right fit for them. In addition to that, we do also offer scholarships. Um, all first year applicants are automatically considered for scholarships. There's no priority deadline or additional materials that you need to submit for that. All first year applicants are just automatically considered when they submit their application to Scripps and um, have completed their application to Scripps. And students are notified of scholarships at, if they've received a scholarship at the time of admission. So um, if a student receives that, it will be detailed in their admission letter. Um, they range anywhere from $15,000 to $28,000 per year, and they are typically renewable four-year scholarships. Um, so that's a, a little bit in regards to the application process, our deadlines, financial aid. Um, and again, if you have more questions about that, we're, we're happy to answer those for you. Um, at this point, we'll go ahead and open it up to any questions that you have, um, anything else that you wanted to learn more about, anything that was top of mind for you. Um, but our contact information is also listed here. Um, so feel free to reach out to myself or to Kyla if you have any other questions um, after the information session. But for now, we'll go ahead and take some questions. All right, so the first question that we have here, does it feel like Scripps is distinctively different than the other five Cs? That's a good question. I can, you know, maybe start and then Kyla, I'll let you um, go ahead and, and take the lead since the next question's for you as well. Um, so, you, you know, I think each of the Claremont colleges kind of has its own distinct personality. I always like to use the analogy that the Claremont colleges are kind of like siblings in a family where they're all connected to one another, but they all have their own distinctive like personality traits and characteristics that also make them a little bit different from one another. Aesthetically, each campus looks very distinctively different, even though they're right across the street from one another. So you will know once you've left Scripps campus and entered into another, um, because the aesthetic vibe is completely different. Um, some of us also have just different programs. The, way, the ways that we navigate academics might look a little bit different from campus to campus. So you get to experience the liberal arts in different ways across our communities. Um, and then, of course, I'd say definitely for Scripps, one big distinction is also that we're the only women's college, but the other four are co-ed institutions. There are some similarities, obviously, in the fact that we are small liberal arts community 
values. So some of those values tend to cross over, but I'd say there are differences. There are aspects to each campus that um, is a little bit different and makes each campus a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I think most of the schools are like equally as different from each other. Um, even if like it's your first day on campus, you have no idea where anything is, you can tell when you're on a different place. You might not know what that different place is, but you can tell that it's different than where you were a minute ago. Um, so I think um, all of them are very distinctly different, but I think Scripps, um, it gives me the most peace and the most calm to be on it. It's very clean. It's um, a bit quieter than the other schools, um, which is uh, definitely appreciative um, at like the end of the evening or on weekends. Um, if you aren't feeling like, oh, I want to go out all night. If you like want to just like be with your friends, watch a movie, do something like in our turn and field house and just like do some puzzles with people or swim in the pool. Um, you don't have to deal with like a bunch of other people with different plans. You can kind of just like come back and then relax. And if you want to go out and do other things, it's very easy for you to do that. Um, you can come back to a clean dorm when you go to sleep. There aren't people yelling across the hall. Um, so I think that's another way that Scripps is a bit distinctly different from all of them. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think that's a good way to describe it. Uh, and then for the music department, um, music is located at Scripps and Pomona. Um, I believe there's at least three different orchestras that students can join. Um, you don't need to be a music major or take any music classes um, to be involved in any of those orchestras. Um, so there's no caps or limitations or requirements for you to be able to join any of those. Um, even if you're trying out the instrument for the first time, um, you can even join those orchestras if you can keep up with everybody else. Um, you can also take free music lessons. Um, I think as long as you can supply the instrument, um, you're good to go, um, or you can rent an instrument if you need to. Um, so if you want to continue taking lessons and work in a group or individually with the professor, you can absolutely do that as well. Um, but you can do it as easily at Scripps as you can at Pomona. So it's mostly on personal preference or people will be involved in both. Um, it's really up to you in that regard. You're not losing any um, advantages or disadvantages if you choose one school over the other, other or if you like switch around. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, another question that we have here, what percentage of double majors graduate in four years and is there support here to find internships? Um, yeah, you can certainly double major and graduate within four years. I don't know that I have an exact percentage. I believe our graduation rate is above 90%, which is really good. And um, there is definitely support in terms of finding internships and just navigating life postscripts as well. So um, our career planning and resources office is the primary support for students in terms of identifying appropriate internships, connecting with um, recruiters, or just understanding how to apply and and submit your applications for internships or apply for internship grants. Um, and I'd say in addition to that too, if you're nervous about just navigating through coursework or um, how are you gonna complete the requirements for a double major, you do have uh, faculty advisors that are also helping you navigate through that experience. And your faculty advisor is actually a major advisor. So if you're double majoring, you'll have two advisors for those programs that will be helping you understand the requirements of those programs, what types of things might um, you know, be most effective to take to complete your program and how you can complete that within, within four years. Um, and Kyla, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that since you're um, kind of in that boat of dual majoring and it can maybe share a little bit more insight to that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so each major only requires about 11 courses, typically, give or take one or two, um, to complete a major, and students have to take at least 32 courses at Scripps slash the five C's by the time that you graduate. Um, so there's a lot of wiggle room if you want to add a second major, if you want to add some minors in there, if you just want to kind of go and have fun and take a bunch of random classes. Um, so really double majoring just takes away the freedom to take like random fun electives. Um, but if you're deciding to double major, it's probably because you really care about your two majors, so you're going to enjoy those classes anyway. Um, so I've never really seen it as a deficit, especially since I was still able to study abroad. I've taken some fun classes purely because I felt like it. Um, so you still do have um, freedom to kind of play around um, and do things that aren't necessarily serving um, a specific major. Um, and then especially with GEs, those could be entirely free reign and places for you to have fun. 
Um, I think everyone has at least one GE that they're not looking forward to, uh, but the other ones are typically exciting in some way. Um, and you can kind of use those to explore other things or do other things that are interesting to you. Um, so it's not so difficult that most people wouldn't be able to graduate within four years, especially since you'll have two people um, who are part of um, the faculty um, and staff helping you out, figuring out when to take a class here, when to take a class for this major, how to schedule to do your senior theses. Uh, people will know what the requirements are for the senior thesis well before you're a senior. It's not something that's kept a secret. Um, so if you want to start thinking about it as a junior, you don't need to turn in anything. But if you have the idea of like, okay, this is what I want to do when I'm a senior. So when you get in the first day of your senior year, you're not like, all right, let's figure out what I'm going to do, you already have that like space to continue going on. Um, so it's absolutely manageable um, as long as you continue thinking about your future semesters and you stay in communication with your uh, major and faculty advisors. Thanks, Kyla. The other thing I forgot to mention just in regards to internships is that it's a pretty high percentage of students at Scripps that do complete internships. Um, over 85% complete at least one internship before they graduate and about a quarter of our students will complete at least three or more before they graduate. So it's definitely popular and um, something that you can receive support with. Uh, another question that I have here um, that was, um, I think just sent to me was, um, how do you feel you have grown at Scripps? So I can talk a little bit about this and then Kyla, if you wanna share to feel free to. Um, so for me, just full disclosure, I'm actually not a Scripps alum myself, but I've been part of the community for just a little over three years. Um, Obviously, for me, most of my community engagement has been in a professional capacity, but I grew up in the East Coast. I did not attend a women's college, so a lot of the, I'd say, like, community aspects of Scripps really did resonate with me when I, when I joined just a little over three years ago. And I've learned so much from our staff, from our faculty, but more importantly from our students just about... Um, being in a community where you can really celebrate who you are. And um, I think for me, the biggest part of growth was embracing my identity, embracing who I am, embracing my interests and my voice, um, which I think is very different from like a, a, a traditional co-ed setting. I, I think back all the time to my undergraduate experience, and I, I loved my undergraduate experience at the institution that I attended, but um, working at Scripps and seeing how our students engage both in and outside of the classroom and some of the takeaways of that experience, I'd say, is just the opportunities to grow and really come into yourself to be empowered to embrace who you are I'd say are just some of the biggest areas that I feel like I've grown as an individual mm -hmm. yeah I totally agree I think when I came into Scripps I was already a very confident very talkative very assertive person um, and the biggest thing that I had to learn was that you don't need to be the loudest person to show that you're smart um, and what um, really like shows someone's intelligence, uh, intelligence, especially in a Scripps classroom, is being able to learn from the people around you and learning how to respect the people around you. Um, because when you enter a Scripps classroom, anybody could be your professor that day. Um, students are able to lead discussions. We can lead whole class periods. Um, and our professors do listen to us and learn from us as well. Um, we can provide a new way to look at material that they've been teaching for 10 years. And they were like, I've never thought of it that way. Thank you for sharing. Um, so you really have the ability to change the room that you're in and the curriculum that you're learning. Um, and because you realize that power in yourself, you also realize that power in the people around you. Um, and so you learn so many ways to become a leader, to be an intelligent presence in the room, um, and also stripping away the competition that could reside in that ability to um, teach others around you. Um, I definitely came from a very, very competitive high school, and I didn't realize how much of a hindrance that was to my growth until I was kind of removed out of it, and I would take a test, and no one would ask me what I got on it. They would just ask me, like, oh, you feel like you did well on it? This is how I felt about it. Do you want to study for the next one? Um, those are the kinds of conversations you have about your grades. Um, or someone can say, like, I have no idea what my grades are, but I'm really enjoying the classes that I'm in. And then they'll realize after the semester, like, oh, I guess I did fairly well in these classes. Because um, you really get to separate the grade from what you learn. Um, so you really just go into the room, like, what am I going to learn today? What can I take out of this class? Not what can I learn to get a better grade for tomorrow? You're really, really present. 
Um, so I think those are the things that I learned the most from scripts and have made me a much more confident person, which I didn't think was possible when I was 18. But I think I'm more cautiously confident in that I know that I don't need to talk the whole time for others to know that I'm in the room and that I belong in the room that I'm in. Um, so I think those are the skills and the parts of myself that I really appreciate and all definitely came from being in the scripts environment and being around my classmates. Yeah. Absolutely. It looks like we have one more question here, um, and I know we're we're a little over time here. So if anybody does need to leave, it, you can certainly um, leave the Zoom meeting. But we'll um, finish out with this question here. So um, the question is: Are there any sports clubs at Scripps or across the five C's? Um, yes, absolutely. So um, uh, club sports and intramurals are are definitely available. Athletics is kind of uniquely divided up across the consortium, too, where um, Scripps, Claremont McKenna, and Harvey Mudd College have their own athletics division and department. So we have our own varsity sports, Division Three, but then we also navigate our, like, recreational club and intramural sports through our Claremont Mudd Scripps athletics department. And then Pomona and Pitzer have also their separate athletics department as well. So there are friendly rivals right across the street, but some of our club sports are even open entirely to the five community so there's there's certainly ways to engage in athletics in a more recreational way whether it's through club sports or intramural sometimes they rotate different sports too over different semesters but there's also a running club there's um inner tube water polo there's roller derby so there's there's tons of you know activities that you can participate in and especially if you're looking for you know club clubs or intramurals um those are definitely available to join yeah Awesome. Well, thank you all so much um, again just for, for joining us for um, being present here today for our information session. We hope this was helpful for you all um, and just kind of getting an introduction to scripts and uh, what our community is all about. Um, so thank you again so much for tuning in. If you have more questions or if there's anything else that you'd like to connect about, feel free to reach out to myself or to Kyla and we hope you all stay safe and be well and um, have a restful holiday break as well. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks all. Thank you. I also forgot to mention your necklace and your shirt look so nice together. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was not expecting them to come together so well, but they did. And I just kind of like, it just kind of happened. So thank you. I appreciate that. So good with the rose garden behind you. I know, right? I sometimes like to coordinate my outfits with my virtual backgrounds. <laughs> no surprise. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Tyler. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I miss seeing you around all the time. <laughs> I know. I miss you guys too. Hopefully I'll see you hopefully more frequently in the spring and obviously through the, when we get back from break too. So mm -hmm. see you. Bye.